Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our online service on today, the 20th of September, which in the Anglican calendar is the 14th Sunday after Trinity. And welcome to our time of worship together. I hope you will um, enjoy the service and I hope that you will join in the parts that are clearly there for us all to say and sing together. Uh, in church, we can't sing, but in the online services, of course, you can join in the music. So please do and enjoy our time of worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Friends, this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now we take a moment to confess our sins to God, to acknowledge before him those ways in which we have failed. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So then, friends, let us all turn away from our sins and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the special prayer for today, the 14th Sunday after Trinity, rejoices in the Lord's cleansing. Merciful God, your Son came to save us, and he bore our sins on the cross. May we trust in your mercy and know your love, rejoicing in the righteousness that is ours, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sins forgiven, we continue to praise God using the words of the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Val is going to bring our two readings for us. The New Testament reading can be found in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. As for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading can be found in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, 
verses 16 to 21. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we're going to sing together the hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. Please join as we sing together. Dressed 
trust in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne This morning we are continuing with a series um, which is entitled Holy Habits and they're inspired by the end of Acts chapter 2. You'll no doubt recall that the end of that passage describes the emerging church as being vibrant and flourishing, as being attractive and inspiring. We can see that they looked well beyond themselves and constantly saw new people coming to faith and they saw people coming to faith in vast numbers but it also describes here a series of holy habits things which the church was committed to doing which served to make them what they became now good habits can be really important in these trying times we have learned more than ever the benefit of washing our hands. We now do it frequently and more thoroughly. And we do it because we know it's beneficial. We know that it will help to fend off this dreadful virus. And as children grow up, we teach them that when they're crossing the road, they must be careful, they must look right, they must look left, and they must look right again. And of course, there are lots of other habits we embrace for very good reason and which prove beneficial to us. In Acts chapter 2, the writer Luke identifies 10 very specific habits in the early church which caused them to prosper. And today we are looking at the important habit of embracing biblical teaching. Now, Val and I um, often watch TV quizzes. And one of the ones uh, we've begun watching recently is Richard Osman's House of Games. I mention it because a question this week was how many words are there in the King James Bible? There were four contestants there. Nobody got anywhere near the correct answer and they all vastly overestimated. I actually heard the true answer, but I cannot remember it at all. Am I bothered that I've forgotten? No, not in the least. What does it really matter how many words are in the Bible? It doesn't matter at all. What matters is how God uses scripture today to communicate with me and his church. Now, I like to think of the Bible in this way as being a love letter from God. When we receive a special letter, love letter perhaps, or indeed something else which is special, it has an impact upon us. We read it and our hearts are warmed. Our attention is arrested. And other things move into the background whilst this letter takes centre stage. 
Maybe we then sit down and reflect on what we have just read. We may put it aside for a moment or two, do something else. But what we nearly always do is pick that letter up again and again. And every time we read this love letter, it warms our heart afresh. We may go on to put it in the drawer for safekeeping perhaps, but it doesn't stay there. And because it's special, it comes out to be read and to be read again and again. Friends, the Bible is a love letter from God to us as individuals and also to his church. When we engage with it, we will always be blessed. And the end of Acts chapter 2 tells that one of the things they did was to devote themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. In these young Christians who saw God amazingly and powerfully at work, there was a hunger to be fed from God's word. You see, something happens as we are drawn into Scripture. The Holy Spirit, as we ask him to, comes and makes it real. He makes it alive and he makes it personal. And if we really start to engage with it, it's really rather like pork scratchings. You want more and more. And that's what happened here with the early church. The young church had a a young leader whose name was Timothy. Now, St. Paul was eager to advise and help him when he could. Timothy was young and he had some very real challenges because of that, leading a church which was not easy. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12, Paul tells him, Timothy, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith and in purity. Timothy is to lead by example, but he also must not be intimidated by his young age because God has appointed him. Now that was tough. In our reading for today, Paul has even more important advice. Paul tells Timothy to hang on hard to the scriptures in 2 Timothy 3 verses 14 and 15. He's been schooled in them from infancy and they are able to make him really wise, always pointing Timothy to Jesus. And he goes on to remind Timothy why the scriptures are there. They are useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting and for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The scriptures direct our lives and they equip us. Now, the Bible does not contain everything there is to know. But in the scriptures, God gives us all that we need to know. It's a love letter from God to bless us today, to remind us of his love and to lead us and his church into his purposes. There's another matter Paul wants Timothy to know, and it's this, that all scripture is God-breathed. Now that's not to say that God dropped a heavy book from heaven, but it is to remind us that he used people and events to bring together in this book what we need to know about ourselves, about the church, about the world, about his plans for us, and about his everlasting love. It's dependable in communicating to us what God wants us to know. Reading the Bible inspires, it challenges, it encourages and it blesses. Scripture is trustworthy because God himself is behind it and wants to make himself known. The Holy Spirit makes it fresh 
every time we engage with it on our own or with others. A holy habit to change our lives and to invigorate the church today just as it did in Acts chapter 2. The church is most in trouble when it neglects scripture. But remember it this way, a love letter from God, a love letter from God to me, a love letter from God to you, and a love letter from God to his church. And enjoy. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word which you have given to us, not containing everything that there is to know, but containing what we need to know to build us up and to build your church. Lord, help us to be eager to engage with your word, because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's join together now in the words of the Creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Val is going to come and lead us in our time of prayer together. Let us pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in faith. We ask your blessing and guidance for world, national and local leaders and ask that there be transparency in leadership and responsibility for the actions taken. We thank you, Lord, for your power of reconciliation, which can bring peace to both people and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for our church leaders and each church member as we fulfil the ministry you call us to. Bless and encourage our Archbishops Justin and Stephen and our local bishops David and Mark. Give wisdom to these stretching times and prosper us all in working for your kingdom in ways. We hold before you the church in places where she struggles with opposition or persecution, asking that they find protection, courage, consolation and strength in you. We pray for Ian Fleming as he is ordained deacon next week and for Lena as she stands alongside him. May this be a time of great blessing and encouragement for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, help and guide our schools, colleges and universities as they continue, especially with any concerns about coronavirus and how they will cope with all the restrictions placed on them. Where resources are stretched, show clearly the best ways forward. Help students to quickly regain what has been lost 
and protect all who work in education. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who face illness today. Heal their bodies, calm their fears, and give them a sense of your purpose for their lives. We pray for NHS workers and for all who work in the care sector. Again, we ask for your protection, for insight and understanding, and for the adequate provision of resources required. We pray also for those working towards producing a COVID-19 antivirus that you will inspire and guide their endeavours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise that you are always with us. May those who are unwell be especially aware of your loving care and may they know your healing power. We ask that those who are lonely or afraid be sustained and reassured by your comforting presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we lead church today, help us to remember that you go with us. Help us to stand out as your people, to love our neighbours, to be slow to judge, to trust in your word and to serve you, our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us join together in saying the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to sing again. We're going to join in the song, There is a Redeemer. Please join in singing together.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us all, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. And now, as we prepare to leave, we receive God's blessing together. Heavenly Father, we share together the blessing of your presence. Give us in this life knowledge of your truth and in the world to come life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.